Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Lower Speeds Live class. We're going to start off with some basic words to get our fingers going. Here we go. Ready? Error, trusting, policy, matters, season, lots, alone, calling, arrange, collection, purchase, showing, brought, vacation, add, Thursday, secure, comes, inquiry, finish, hands, thousand, talked, purpose, fully, advantage, sometimes, fill, success, shipping, stop, worth, customer, black, afraid, regards, game, discount. All right. One thing I'm going to do, I know nobody's come in the class yet, but I'm going to mute everybody just in case someone jumps in. Then uh, it won't interrupt our class. All right. So let's get started with a number drill. These are going to focus on chapters. I'm going to give you some chapters and then I'll redo the paragraph. I'm going to read this paragraph once at 60, then again at 80 and again at 100. Here we go. This is going to focus on pages and chapters. Here we go. Chapter 12, page 10. Chapter 50, page 782. Chapter 14, page 679. Chapter 60, page 99. Chapter 25, page 44, chapter 40, page 201. All right, and here is your paragraph. I'm going to read this one time through at 60, again at 80, and again at 100. Here we go. Please refer in your text to the following readings on divorce and dissolution. Chapter six, pages 114 through 118. Chapter 10, pages 231 through 234. Chapter 16, pages 319 through 321 and chapter 17, pages 326 through 328. The selected readings on alimony are in chapter five, page 79, and chapter 12, page 258. All right. I've got some sentences that focus on the final consonants, FL, FLD, FLZ, F T F T S and F D. Here we go. Ready? The lofts were improved. We removed the rifle. They used a craft to travel. 
her feelings were ruffled. Gavels were given as gifts. You should raffle off the raft. The Berlin aircraft was not a trifle. It was a swift civil suit. We were adrift on a level sea. It was our drafts that were approved. There were rifts that were proved. The gavel was leveled. She sifts fact from rumor. He was baffled by the removal. It was only a trifle. Her screams were stifled. He believed he could unravel it. They traveled around the world. There is a draft in here. He loved her soft lips. All right. Moving right into our next drill. This is going to focus on words that have the OO spellings. We use the AO for OO, even though they don't always have the OO sound. We always default to the AO, no matter what, if it's an OO spelling. Here we go, ready? Blood, tool, brook, doom, book, wood, Soon, loot, stool, tooth, room, boot, coon, poor, booth, moon, loom, hood, door, scoop, pool, Spoon, toot, shampoo, noon, boon, foot, coop, shoot, to, cook, rook, fool, cook, broom, bloom, Food, groom, stood, flood, nook, crook, loop, poop, boost, roof, lose, snook, sloop, roost, Goose, soothe, smooth, swoop, hook, hoof, or huff, suit. All right. Now I've got some words here that focus on vowel practice. So you may hear the A-E reversal, long A, long U, long I, long E, so and long U. It's, it's kind of a mixture. It's a vowel practice. Here we go. Ready? Stare, rear, low, row, hue, higher, mare, her, layer, lower, Tor, pear, 
pray, soar, rye, bore, bear, high, higher, tar, hard, hear, mere, leer, liar, my, more, bear, lore, taught, rare, bow, dear, dot, hair, mo, mire, tour, lure, tear, tort, die, sue, sort, tire, sir, see, seer, buy, port, sire, soar, pair, pray. All right. <clears throat> I have a legal paragraph for you. I'm going to give you the word list before we read it. You're going to hear arson, malicious, bodily, alteration, consummation, threatened, assault, battery, forgery, willful, bribery, falsification, defraud, penalty, burglary. All right, so I'm going to read this once at 60, again at 80, and again at 100. Okay, here we go. Ready? Arson is the malicious and willful burning of property. Most states provide a severe penalty when arson is committed and lives are threatened. An assault is a threat to an individual to inflict bodily harm or injury. Battery is the actual consummation of the threat. Bribery is the exchange of anything of value in order to influence a decision or act. Bribery is considered a misdemeanor. In most states, burglary is the crime of breaking and entering with the intent to commit a felony. Forgery is the alteration or falsification of a written instrument with the clear intent to defraud. All right, so I will read that again at 80. I just realized I didn't read that last uh, number paragraph at 100. So I can go back and I'll read that again at 100. Sorry about that. I was writing in the uh, date and went right on to the next drill. All right, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do this again at 80 and again at uh, 100. Here we go. Arson is the malicious and willful burning of property. Most states provide a severe penalty when arson is committed and lives are threatened. An assault is a threat to an individual to inflict bodily harm 
or injury. Battery is the actual consummation of the threat. Bribery is the exchange of anything of value in order to influence a decision or act. Bribery is considered a misdemeanor. In most states, burglary is the crime of breaking and entering with the intent to commit a felony. Forgery is the alteration, <coughs> excuse me, or falsification of a written instrument with the clear intent to defraud. All right, so I will read that one more time at 100. Here we go. Arson is the malicious and willful burning of property. Most states provide a severe penalty when arson is committed and lives are threatened. An assault is a threat to an individual to inflict bodily harm or injury. Battery is the actual consummation of the threat. Bribery is the exchange of anything of value in order to influence a decision or act. Bribery is considered a misdemeanor. In most states, burglary is the crime of breaking and entering with the intent to commit a felony. Forgery is the alteration or falsification of a written instrument with the clear intent to defraud. All right, so I'm going to go back to that paragraph with the pages and chapters. I'm going to read this to you um, at 80 and again at 100 because I didn't do that. All right, so here we go. Please refer in your text to the following readings on divorce and dissolution. Chapters 6, pages 114 through 118. Chapter 10, pages 231 through 234. Chapter 16, pages 319 through 321 and chapter 17, pages 326 through 328. The selected readings on alimony are in chapter 5, page 79 and chapter 12, page 258. All right, so this last time will be at 100. Here we go. Please refer in your text to the following readings on divorce and dissolution. Chapter 6, pages 114 through 118. Chapter 10, pages 231 through 234. Chapter 16, pages 319 through 321, and chapter 17, pages 326 through 328. The selected readings on alimony are in chapter 5, page 79, and chapter 12, page 258. All right, moving right into some literary. I've got a piece on the weather. Let me give you a word list. You're going to hear weather, drought, prediction, technology, atmosphere, uh, fluctuation, 
science, forecast, vulnerable, troposphere, meteor meteorologist, centuries, uh, dramatically, meteor meteorology, you're going to hear both of those, and phenomena. All right, so here is your paragraph. And I'm going to read this at 60. Here we go. One of the most important factors influencing the environment is the weather. People have had to cope with the fluctuations of weather patterns for centuries. With all of the advancements in technology, we still find ourselves as vulnerable as ever to rain, sleet, snow, hail, and drought. The science that deals with the study of weather is known as meteorology. The weather phenomena takes place in a relatively small portion of the atmosphere, which extends six to 10 miles above the earth. This area is called the troposphere. The air in the troposphere is in constant movement, which explains the changes in the weather patterns. Meteorologists have learned much about the weather and its cycles. We do not hesitate to make predictions and forecasts, but all too often, the factors affecting a weather forecast can change dramatically making any prediction totally inaccurate. All right, moving right into some jury charge. The subject here is interrogatory. Here we go, ready? Please take notice that defendant Austin Nichols requires that Tristan Summers additional defendant on counterclaim answered under oath the following interrogatories within 15 days from the date of service hereof pursuant to rule 30. Number one, on what date was the Badger Trencher, model 303, delivered to you by defendant Austin Nichols. Number two, when said machine was delivered to you, was it in good repair? Number three, if the answer to number two is negative, list what repairs were necessary to place said machine in good repair. Number four, if the repairs referred to in number three were made, list each part or item of material put on said machine from where purchased, the cost of the item, to whom payment was made, 
the date of each payment and the date each item was put on said machine. Number five, if the repairs referred to in number three were made, list the total number of hours of labor performed on said machine by whom the labor was performed. The amount paid, therefore, to each person so working. The dates each person worked. And the dates payment was made. Number six, if the repairs referred to in number three were made, and if you personally worked thereon, list the dates you so worked and the numbers of hours each date, the nature of the work done on each date, and the agreed or reasonable value of such labor. Number seven, were any repairs or improvements made on said machine subsequent to those referred to in number three, number four, number five, and number six? Number eight, if the answer to number seven is in the affirmative, List each item of material or part put on said machine from where purchased. The cost of each item to whom payment was made, the date of each payment, and the date each item was put on said machine. Number nine, if the answer to number seven is in the affirmative, list the total number of hours of labor performed on said machine by whom the labor was performed. The amount paid, therefore, to each person so working, the dates each person worked, and the dates the payment was made. Number 10, if the answer to number seven is in the affirmative, and if you personally worked thereon, list the dates you so worked, and the number of hours each date, the nature of the work done on each date, and the agreed or reasonable value of such labor. Number 11, if the answer to number seven is in the affirmative, were such repairs or improvements made at the request of defendant Austin Nichols? Number 12, if the answer to number 11 is in the affirmative, how was such request transmitted to you by defendant Austin Nichols? Number 13, if the answer to number seven is in the affirmative, were such repairs or improvements made with the knowledge and express consent of defendant Austin Nichols? Number 14, if the answer to number 13 is in the affirmative, 
how was said consent transmitted to you by defendant Austin Nichols? Number 15, state the use made of said machine by you or under your direction and consent. Number 16, state the total gross receipts received by you from use of said machine since date of purchase. Number 17, state total expenses attributable to the jobs on which said machine was used. Number 18, state the total gross profits earned by you from said machine. Number 19, list the payments made by you to defendant Austin Nichols as his share of the gross profits from the use of said machine. Number 20, state what evidence you have that defendant Austin Nichols received each of the payments referred to in number 19. Number 21, have you ever been convicted? Number 22, if the answer to 21 is in the affirmative, list the date and court of conviction together with the crime of which you were convicted. Number 23, is Madison Summers, the plaintiff, your wife? Number 24, state the total complete and exact consideration given or delivered to you by plaintiff Madison Summers for the assignment of your alleged claim against defendant Austin Nichols. All right, that should have given you a great workout with your numbers there. We'll go ahead and start with q and I've got a one page Q&A that I'm going to give you. All right, how are we doing on time? All right, so it's 5.37, so good, we're doing good on time. All right, let me give you a word list. You're going to hear grapevine, restaurant. The brief for restaurant is S-T-R-A-U-N-T. Uh, attorney, T-O-R-N, escrow, S-K-R, long O, scrow, real estate, and neighbor, N, long A, B. All right, so we're going to, I'm going to read this once at 60, once at 80, and again at 100. All right, here we go. This is going to be defense questioning. Approximately how long did the conversation last that occurred where you were discussing maybe renting his property? I would say about five minutes or so. It was just in the driveway and out. That's all there was to it. Did you hear by way of the grapevine that his property might be for sale or lease? Yes, you can ask any of the neighbors right on down the street about the place. Well, is there any sort of sign up that says it is for rent or anything like that? No. Did a particular person say Mr. Gardner was interested in renting his property or selling it 
or something? No, you hear of a place for rent and every, everybody goes and looks at it, you know, to see if it's something better than they have now. I am just trying to figure out from whom you heard it. Oh, I don't know. Did you meet somebody in a restaurant or did a real estate broker tell you or did you see it online? No, it wasn't a real estate broker. There was no sign up on the property? No. Did a real estate broker help you in finding the place that you have now? No, sir. I found my own. Did you handle your own escrow for that place? Sure did. You say you did handle your own escrow? Yes, I did. All right, so I'm going to read that again at 80. Okay, here we go. Approximately how long did the conversation last that occurred where you were discussing maybe renting his property? I would say about five minutes or so. It was just in the driveway and out. That's all there was to it. Did you hear by way of the grapevine that his property might be for sale or lease? Yes, you can ask any of the neighbors right on down the street about the place. Well, is there any sort of sign up that says it is for rent or anything like that? No. Did a particular person say Mr. Gardner was interested in renting his property or selling it or something? No, you hear of a place for rent and everybody goes and looks at it, you know, to see if it's something better than they have now. I am just trying to figure out from whom you heard it. Oh, I don't know. Did you meet somebody in a restaurant or did a real estate broker tell you or did you see it online? No, it wasn't a real estate broker. There was no sign up on the property? No. Did a real estate broker help you in finding the place that you have now? No, sir. I found my own. Did you handle your own escrow for that 
place. Sure did. You say you did handle your own escrow. Yes, I did. All right, so I'm going to read that again at 100. Last time, here we go. Approximately how long did the conversation last that occurred where you were discussing maybe renting his property? I would say about five minutes or so. It was just in the driveway and out. That's all there was to it. Did you hear by way of the grapevine that his property might be for sale or lease? Yes, you can ask any of the neighbors right on down the street about the place. Well, is there any sort of sign up that says it is for rent or anything like that? No. Did a particular person say Mr. Gardner was interested in renting his property or selling it or something? No. You hear of a place for rent and everybody goes and looks at it, you know, to see if it's something better than they have now. I am just trying to figure out from whom you heard it. Oh, I don't know. Did you meet somebody in a restaurant or did a real estate broker tell you or did you see it online? No, it wasn't a real estate broker. There was no sign up on the property? No. Did a real estate broker help you in finding the place that you have now? No, sir. I found my own. Did you handle your own escrow for that place? I sure did. You say you did handle your own escrow? Yes, I did. All right, so now I'm going to give you some Q&A where the plaintiff will be questioning, okay? And uh, I will read this one at 100. All right, since we're pretty warmed up and you just get what you can, okay? All right, here we go. You have had occasion to go over this testimony with various law enforcement agents, haven't you? Yes, I have. Has it been pointed out to you that what you said at that time had to be false because the Holiday Inn didn't open until February of 2015? I don't remember that. So what you told the court and jury in the federal case as to time was false, wasn't it? I could have made a mistake, but it wasn't false. And you have a vivid memory, at least. You pretended to in front of the jury. Yes, I did. Well, now going on beyond that point for a moment, were you always sure that this bookmaking operation was active in 2014 or earlier? It was in 2014 or earlier, yes. Well, did you ever think it was later? No, it wasn't. I am sure it wasn't later. Did you ever think it was 2015? No, it wasn't 
2015. I know you said that it was 2015 on another occasion, didn't you? Well, I said approximately at that time, but I wasn't sure about that. Well, you have always been clear on the fact that you went to work at an earlier time. Is that true? I don't remember that. Well, let's continue. You have been convicted of a felony of bookmaking yourself, have you not? Yes, and I received an unconditional pardon. Before the pardon, you were sentenced to the Nevada State Prison outside Las Vegas. Is that true? That's true. Did you serve time? Yes, I did. What was the nature of the bookmaking operation of which you were convicted? It was an operation that involved thousands of dollars. Where was the operation? At the Club Reno in downtown Las Vegas. Now, the reason I ask you about that is that you swore three months ago in federal court that you had been convicted and you said to the grand jury in this case, I was the biggest bookmaker in Nevada. Yes, I said that. Now earlier in federal court, you had been convicted of selling narcotics, hadn't you? It was painkillers containing morphine then, in 2009, you invented a substance containing narcotics for doping horses. That is not true. In what year did you receive your pardon? In 2012. Now, to quote directly from the first trial of this case in federal court, when mentioning the pardon to the jury. You said, I was completely rehabilitated. I don't remember saying that, no. You were pardoned. You never again violated the law. You deserved a pardon. Is that it? Yes. Okay, what was the year you received the pardon again? in 2012 and within a very short time as you described this morning you were passing bribes to public officials weren't you yes i was by 2013 you were making large bets weren't you like ten thousand dollars a day it was more like $20,000 to $30,000 a day. At the same time that you were betting, were you informing the Internal Revenue Service as to the identity of other bookmakers you did business with? No, not necessarily. Did you give the names of all the bookmakers? Yes, most of them. Yes, you said most of them. What does that mean? What? I don't understand. Can you repeat the question? Did you withhold information and names? No, I did not. All right, now I'm going to read you one, one Q&A before we end. I'm going to read this at 
uh, 80, just to kind of get us wound down a little bit, and then that'll be the end of our class. All right, so it's going to be plaintiff attorney. Here we go. What did you say to the plaintiff, and what did the plaintiff say to you? That the expenses had gone up and that some adjustment should be made. Were the utilities mentioned? Yes. What was said? That they were nearly double. In what time span? Over the three years. Did he give you the figures? Yes, he did. Can you remember what they were? No, not exactly. What did you tell the plaintiff? That I did not know why there was so much, you know, such a large increase. Did you have any written agreement with the plaintiff? I believe that it could be called a written agreement. Was that agreement written and prepared by the plaintiff? I don't know. Do you have a copy of the written agreement that you have referred to? I don't know. I don't know whether I have a copy or not. In general, what does it say? It says that the utilities and other overhead expenses should be shared between the parties. Did it say anything else? that you can recall? No, not that I recall. Do you recall any figures at all that were mentioned to you? I don't believe I do. Can you remember the date that the plaintiff told you the increase? No. All right, looks like we have time for maybe one more. I'll go ahead and read this one at 100. Okay, here we go. At what streets, Main Street and Oak Avenue, did you take a seat before this incident took place? Yes. Were you still seated in that seat? when this incident happened? Yes. Where were you seated? What place on the bus? Yes. About in the middle, more or less, on the bus. What side of the bus? The right side of the bus. Do you mean the side where the doors are located? Yes. Were you seated next to the aisle? No. Were you seated next to the window? Exactly right against the window. How tall are you? I can tell you centimeters. Are you able to tell me in feet and inches? No. Give it to me in centimeters. 165 approximately. What length of time had you been on the bus when this incident took place? 10 or 15 minutes. I can't say exactly the time. For the block before this happened, what were you doing? Nothing. Were you looking out the window? 
out the window. Were you also looking around the bus? Not really. Was there someone sitting on the seat in front of you? Yes. Can you describe this person? It was a blonde haired lady. Was she alone in the seat? Well, she had an umbrella and she had a lot of packages with her. And that last one was at 100. All right, so that concludes our lower speed live class. Have a great day.